This has been in the news for the past two to three days where Alabama A&M football player Medrick Burnett passed away due to injuries that he sustained in a game October 26. Now, there was some initial reports a couple of days ago where he had passed away, but then that was retracted. Then his death was officially announced yesterday and a lot of people were wondering what happened. My name is Dr. Betsy Grunch and I am a board certified neurosurgeon. So I wanna take a minute to try to help explain this case. First off, I wanna say my deepest thoughts and condolences go out to his family, his friends, and the entire Alabama A&M community. Now again, I am not his physician. I do not know any details surrounding this case other than what I have seen online. Reportedly, Burnett suffered a head injury in the game on October 26, where he had head-to-head -head contact with another player and had to be taken to a hospital for further evaluation. He was diagnosed with a severe traumatic brain injury and sustained brain swelling secondary to several bleeds. Again, I got this information from news online that was reported by his sister. Head-to-head -head contact in football games is a very dangerous type of injury. And that's exactly why the targeting penalty in football has been initiated is because of the severity of what it can do to your brain. He likely sustained a severe brain trauma due to that head-to-head -head contact and suffered what's called cerebral edema or swelling of the brain related to this injury. In patients that suffer from severe head trauma and have brain swelling, neurosurgeons will typically insert a catheter or a monitor inside of the brain to measure what's called the intracranial pressures or the pressure in the brain inside of the skull. The skull contains the brain and it's a confined space. If there is swelling of the brain, there's not much room for it to go. So in patients that have severe pressure issues, will undergo what's called a craniectomy where we can actually remove parts of the skull to allow the brain to swell. And reportedly, that's what Mr. Burnett had. Sometimes, despite all of these things, patients can still have persistent brain swelling where we have to put them to an induced coma in order to help medically treat the brain swelling when surgical options aren't enough. We can put patients into medically induced comas for days to even up to a week. In younger patients that we are trying to give them every chance at survival, we will do everything in our power to get them through this. So you can imagine that this process that the patient goes through from admission to monitoring the brain swelling, from surgery to induced coma, that period of time can be weeks that happen after the initial injury. And sometimes despite everything that we can do in our power, some patients' brain just swell to the point where they can proceed to brain death. Now the process of diagnosing someone with brain death that's been in a medically induced coma can take quite some time because of course we want to be 100% sure that the patient will not survive. In fact, at most hospitals, there has to be two different tests for brain death within a certain number of hours apart. So I imagine in this case, this is why the death was initially announced, then retracted, and then reannounced, as he may have had one brain death examination that was released by the family and then retracted because he hadn't formally been declared brain dead. So I hope this helps explain the process as to why in this case, his initial injury was a month ago and he just passed away due to complications from that head injury. My deepest thoughts go to his family, his friends, and the entire Alabama A&M community and all those doctors, nurses, and other healthcare professionals that help care for him during this time. As a doctor, these cases can be incredibly challenging and very, very sad. Having to tell someone that their child will not survive is one of the hardest things that I have to do.